Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, we're gonna be going over three of the most common mistakes people make, trust me, I see it all the time, when they're flying instrument approaches. So don't let this be you. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. When you're learning to fly IFR, there is so much to cover. This video assumes that you are working on the basics, you know that stuff, and we're gonna dive right into some of the finer points. First thing is, if you are above your glide slope or glide path, your autopilot will not capture, okay? So, so if you're trying to arm the approach mode, there's no situation that I'm aware of in any autopilot where the autopilot will dive at your glide slope and your glide path and intercept it from above. So if you want the autopilot to fly your vertical approach profile, you have to arm the approach mode before the glide slope or the glide path comes down to the point at which you're gonna intercept it on the OBS or your HSI. Take for example this recent flight that I did into Hayward where the, the controller had me at 5,000 feet, even though at this part of the, pro, of, of, of the approach I probably should have been lower, only there was traffic, VFR traffic, that, that the ATC had to keep me clear of, right? So they're keeping me up high. By the time that traffic moved out of my way and I got my final turn toward the approach course, I was well above the glide path. All right, so in that situation, if you want the autopilot to fly it, you will have to get underneath the glide path manually. You will have to descend the aircraft below your glide path and then arm the approach mode on your autopilot. I wanna be really clear here that I'm talking about operating outside the final approach fix at this point. Uh, if you're above the glide path and you're inside the final approach fix, you should go missed, never dive for it. But if you're still outside the final approach fix and you wanna get under it so that you can capture it and have the autopilot fly you in, past the final approach fix, uh, that's what I'm talking about. So making sure that you stay above these step town altitudes here, uh, it is safe to get under the glide path while still outside the final approach fix. All right, so we're above the glide path here. I am not going to be able to, I'm not gonna be able to use the autopilot because it won't intercept the glide path. All right, another common error that I see are pilots failing to select the CDI, the course deviation indicator, to the correct nav source. Now this is done differently in a lot of different airplanes. In some airplanes, it's an analog button that you actually push in and out on the panel. In other cases, it's inside the GPS software. And you can see here in the unit that I'm using, it's right on the face of the OBS. But the most important thing is, whatever navigation technology the approach is built on, a localizer, an ILS, or an RNAV approach, whatever the technology is, once you're inside the final approach fix, you have to have your course deviation indicator, your CDI, connected to that nav source. So if it's a VHF signal, you should see a green needle. If it's a GPS signal, you should see a pink needle and verify your linear scaling, of course. Um, but it's very, very important that you don't forget if you're using your GPS right in the background for situational awareness only, it's very important that you don't forget to select your CDI to the VHF nav source before you cross the final approach fix. Last thought on that is I do recommend loading it into your GPS. So I'm not gonna tell you not to do that because there's a huge advantage on the missed approach. If you fly that green VHF signal all the way down to the missed approach point and you do have to go missed, well then if you select your CDI back to the GPS, it will have the missed approach procedure built in for you. And in the case of Livermore, where you can see here, that's a pretty complicated missed approach procedure, uh, that can be very helpful. All right, 3,500 to establish this. Make sure we have to push this button. Ooh, that didn't work. There it is, localizer. There you go. Another great thing you can do for situational awareness if you're a four flight user is overlay the approach chart directly onto the low altitude and route chart. Uh, this is an excellent way to maintain situational awareness. The last mistake that I see people make, and it's probably the most important one, it's one that, that all instrument pilots should practice and really resist thinking here that you already know this because 95% of the pilots I fly with need work here. And that is don't chase the needle. 
right? You know what I mean by chasing the needle? Like if your CDI goes out to the right, you just turn right until the needle starts coming left and then it goes left and then you turn left, right? And you're just chasing the movement of that needle. It's extremely important that you remember the runway isn't moving, right? It's just sitting out there in space, sitting out there on the earth. And if you turn toward the needle that's going to line up with that runway and the needle trends toward the center, you're headed back toward that runway and you're gonna get there before you cross the threshold. It kinda of doesn't matter how fast the needle is trending toward center. As you get better, you're gonna to wanna to get on it sooner than later. But as long as that needle is moving toward the center, you are headed toward that runway. So it's extremely important that you pick a heading, you call out the heading, and then you note the trend on the needle. For this reason, I always have my instrument students fly at least one ILS approach with on a clear day with no foggles, no hood, no nothing, so they can see the runway and make the connection in their mind of how that needle relates to this thing that's just sitting out there not moving on the ground. Now one of the most important things here is that I'm not chasing the needles, right? Like you can you can see out the window on a day like today that the runway doesn't move. So if my heading is trending the needle back in, it kind of doesn't matter how fast it's moving. It's trending back in. So if I need this course back, right, I need to call out a heading. Let's call it 305. Winds are strong today. So I go heading 305 and I wait. And I see what's the effect of that heading. If that heading has the effect that the needle is trending towards center, it doesn't really matter how fast that needle's moving. I'm headed back toward the runway, which is fixed in, at a point on the earth, right? The runway is not moving. All right, you guys, those are the three most common mistakes I see on instrument approaches. Uh, remember, I do office hours now every Friday, 12 to 12.30. If you have questions for me or you'd like some support in your flight training, you can find out more at patreon.com slash learn TFP. We also have a free three-day trial of our ground school app. We have a new oral test prep simulator. I think it's the first of its kind ever. There's a new oral test prep simulator in our ground school app. If you want to do a mock oral with me, uh, you're going to love this feature. You get a free three-day trial at learnthefinerpoints.com. Also remember that ForeFlight is the essential app for aviation online at foreflight.com and that when you renew your AOPA membership, make sure you select pilot protection services. That could come in very handy someday. I'm Jason Miller. You guys are the best fans on the internet. Until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.